Good morning, brothers and sisters. I hope you're having a blessed week. Would you join me in singing Be Thou My Vision, hymn number 451. Let's sing together. Be thou my vision, O Lord of my heart, not be all else to me save that thou art. Thou my best thought by day or by night, waking or sleeping, thy presence my the pastor of the Christ in Stanton United Methodist Churches. And I pray you all are doing well as God continues to bless and be with us all. Before I move into our scripture readings and sermon for this week, I want to share some exciting news and some important thoughts. First, our conference has now moved us back into orange phase. Now, their definition of this is no more than 50 people in a group, presuming that group takes up less than 50% of the space in our church buildings. Well, both Christ and Stanton United Methodist Churches fit that category. So, with that information, here are my plans for our churches. First, we will not have in-house worship this Sunday, January 17th. We'll need a few days to make sure our churches are clean and ready to go for all activities. Starting next Tuesday, January 19th, the Women of the Christ United Methodist Church are invited to gather at the church for their Tuesday morning Bible study at 10 a.m. if they so desire. On Thursday, January 21st, the men can resume their Bible study at 6 a.m. at the Christ Church also. And then on Sunday, January 24th, we will gather for in-house worship at both churches, Christ UMC at 9 a.m. and the Stanton Church at 10.15 a.m. Also, my official office hours will resume on Monday, January 18th. I'll be at the Stanton Church on Monday from 8.30 a.m. till around 3 p.m. and at the Christ Church Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday from about 8.30 till about 3 p.m. in the afternoon. Now, I want to thank you all for your patience through all of this. I know this has been difficult. But now we can move forward. We can come together again and be the church. I am very excited to see you all again, to worship with you again, and to be in the presence of God in these holy places. And I just say, praise God. Along with that great news, I have some other things I want you to prayerfully think about. The year... 
2020 was unlike any we ever could have imagined. I'm not alone when I say, thank God it's over. We have moved into a new year with new hopes and dreams. We have a new president that will be in place soon. I, I suggest that we be open to see what will happen under his leadership. We have vaccines that are being distributed to help fight the coronavirus. We are in a place where we can have negativity and despair in our lives, in our country, in our world, or we can remember to love God and love our neighbors as ourselves. It's completely up to us. Now, because of that, I've chosen to share with you a short sermon series based on the book, Three Simple Rules. Now, this book was written by Bishop Reuben Job, and it's based on three simple rules that our church's founder, John Wesley, suggested as a way of living our lives in holy and Christian ways. I find it enlightening, and I hope you will too as we continue our journey into this new year. So, our first scripture reading today comes to us from Galatians. It is Galatians chapter 5, verse 15, which says, If, however, you bite and devour one another, take care that you are not consumed by one another. Our second scripture reading comes to us from the Gospel of Luke. It is Luke chapter 14, verses 28 and 33, which says, For which of you, intending to build a tower, does not first sit down and estimate the cost to see whether he has enough to complete it? So, therefore, none of you can become my disciple if you do not give up all your possessions. My friends, this is the Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. Holy Lord, we thank you for this time with you. We thank you, Lord, for your continued love, your peace, and your hope in our lives. Open our hearts, open our minds, open our ears to hear the message that you have for us this day. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. So, again, hello to all of you. Now, as I said, um, today we begin a short sermon series um, called Three Simple Rules, which means it'll be three weeks long. And it's based on three rules that John Wesley, the, the founder of Methodism, put forth as ways of living in the world for the early Methodists as well as for us today. The reason that John Wesley outlined the three rules is because one of the greatest challenges of being a faithful follower of Jesus is following the two great commandments that Jesus outlined for us. We've heard these. I've preached about these. Love the Lord your God with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as you love yourself. Now, while those sound like wonderful words and a powerful way to live life, they can be very challenging to figure out how we live those out each day. I don't know if you know this, but the Bible has many commandments, not just the ten. Um, you know, we you know, do not commit adultery, do not steal, do not murder, do not have any other gods besides the one true God, do not take the Lord's name in vain, do not lie, do not judge, do not hate your brother or sister. So what is all that saying? Well, in short, what it's saying is do no harm. Do no harm. That's how John Wesley summarized all of these commandments. It's simple. It's memorable. But what does it mean? 
Well, some would say that we humans have certain things that we are obligated to do and not do. There are certain things that are right, and there are certain things that are wrong. Simply put, we are obligated to do what is right and not do what is wrong. Others would say that we have a divine purpose and an end that we are moving towards. We are moving toward an end which Christians understand as the love of God and the love of neighbor. So you see, in this case, it's not just an obligation, but it's an actual divine purpose that we want to reach. Again, do no harm. Every person is a child of God and every person has sacred worth to God. God values people above all else. John Wesley reminded his followers and tells us that doing no harm is about seeing each person the way God sees them, through the eyes of Jesus Christ. This is why the scriptures tell us that the best thing that we can do to find fulfillment and joy in life is to bless others. If you are a blessing to your spouse, your kids, and all the people you know, then it is a blessing to you to be a blessing to them. On the other hand, we know that the pain we inflict on other people is pain that can eventually come back to us as well. What goes around comes around, right? And if we're not careful, we will repeat inflicting pain over and over again. We should quit harming people for that simple reason alone. And yet... We harm other people for many reasons, because of the way it makes us feel, because we hope to get something out of it, or if somebody blames you for something, you oftentimes blame somebody else. It's human nature. There's a saying that goes like this, hurt people hurt people. We who hurt and harm others are those who have been harmed and wounded ourselves. Sometime, somehow, we try to make ourselves feel better by causing other people pain, and yet we find that this does not lead to happiness or fulfillment. However, we oftentimes repeat this over and over again, and yet can't figure out why we never find healing. Some of the happiest and nicest people in the world have experienced great pain, perhaps pain similar to the pain that you and I have experienced. Some of the unhappiest and meanest people in the world have experienced pain like ours. What's interesting is not the severity of the pain, but the decision people make of what to do with the pain. The decision is either taking the pain and giving it to Jesus and having Jesus do something with it, or taking their pain and using it to harm others. The good news of Jesus is not only that you can take the words, do no harm, and live better, and those words will help, but also that Jesus will offer healing and help you out of your pain and your brokenness so that you can find the strength to do no harm. Jesus can heal you simply by showing you just how much you're loved. And if you feel that you are loved, you are less likely to cause pain to others. So, when you look at all the decisions that face you, big and small, you have to examine what decision you need to make. Do no harm. Do no harm because it's better for your own soul. 
do no harm because when you inflict pain on others, you eventually inflict pain on yourself as well. Do no harm because you recognize that we all experience pain. So why cause more? And more than anything else, do no harm because you recognize that your pain will be healed through Jesus. And when you recognize this, your motivation for hurting others no longer exists. You have decisions facing you. And the question before you today is this. What do I do? The answer? Do no harm. Do no harm. Let us pray. Holy Lord, you encourage us to come to you with everything in our lives, the good and the bad, the joy and the pain, to bring it to you and to give it to you. And then you tell us to do no harm, to love you, gracious God, and to love our neighbors as ourselves, even our enemies. Do no harm. This may be a foreign concept to some, but Lord, may our hearts be fully open to that concept of doing no harm and sharing your love with everyone all around us. Oh Lord, guide us as we attempt in our lives to do no harm and to love as you love us. Bless us, Lord, and be with us. In your name we pray. Amen. Blessings and peace to you all. Amen.